seconds. So I broke it off and hurt my leg. Well, guys, welcome, guys and gals, welcome to our tribute panel to Darwin. Um, uh, I, I'm going to start by reading uh, a letter from uh, Darwin's wife to bring you up to speed. Um, yeah, come on, Mike. All right, I have to put on my old man glasses to do it. <laughs> Which is a good note in the beginning. It says, uh, maybe you can print this out for Jimmy since, and make the text super large. Well, <laughs> we can do that. So I have it here, so... I have the glasses, but Frank knows these glasses. He wears these to look smarter. It doesn't work. Okay, anyway. Anyway, I'm just read this. This is from Marsha, Darwin's wife. Um, and, uh, okay. Hello from Canada, and thank you all for coming this evening. I'm very sorry I can't be there with you, but please drink all the drinks for me. Knowing this crowd, it's a lot of drinks. Okay. I know Darwin's passing came suddenly and quite shocking, so I'd like to give you more information to answer the questions you may have, and then the gang can discuss the less, the less sad parts. In late, in late December, Darwin started having severe pain in his shoulder. After the holidays, we went to a walk-in clinic, expecting a diagnosis of a, to a torn rotator cuff. His diagnosis was stage four lung cancer. We began, we began Radiation and chemotherapy. By the end of February, it had aggressively grown and was spreading to more locations. We transferred to Moffitt Cancer Center in Tampa in early March and began immunotherapy and more radiation. In early May, we were told the treatment was not successful and entered hospice. On uh, Saturday, May 14th, he lost his battle. He took his leave just like you would expect, strong, passionate, and full of hope. He drew until Wednesday, the Wednesday before. He made us laugh until late Friday night. He, he probably will make you laugh tonight, which is true. We, we, we're trying to, we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna celebrate the joy of Darwin here. Um, he was surrounded by friends and family throughout this treatment. He didn't suffer. And he wasn't self himself until the end. Uh, sometime over the next year, I'll be putting together a collected book of pieces our friends drew to raise funds for our charities. Thank you for coming this evening, and thank you to all our weirdo comic friends on the panel. Have fun. Don't punch anyone unless they deserve it. Marsha. Okay. There's going to be no punching tonight, right? Yeah. Unless Frank gets out of hand. We'll we'll say, we'll people say. from the audience can come up and hit Frank. If I want to advise him. <laughs> Frank punches back. I'll hold your arms. Yeah, I'll hold your arms. We're going to run a little slideshow a uh, buddy of ours put together uh, with just with some art and some quotes. Um, you guys want to read up in there? Just a reminder how wonderful and brilliant he was and how much everybody thought of him. And thought of himself right there. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, those are 52 covers, right? That was from the 52? Yeah. yeah. G.I. Zombie, in case anyone ever never saw that. So, uh, Darwin was my go-to guy for covers. No matter how crazy it was, he would definitely... Exactly. I agree. I'd pose for that. Scott Dumbass is editor at IDW that edited the uh, Parker novels. That's who Scott is. Also an old friend. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Hey, Jerry. 
Yeah. The green arrow, if you look closely, is giving the finger. That's a whole other story right there, but uh, the most, the ultimate flattery naming, him naming the bar, Jimmy's. Uh, yeah. I got my go-to guy on covers that way. What's that? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, you can look at a thousand of those and not hit board for a second. Fantastic. Um, I will warn if there's any underage kids here, it might get a little uh, dicey. I, I know there's one, but we, he's kind of heard everything, right? This <laughs> 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 says it all. Is there anybody else? Or is, uh, everybody's pretty much over 16. Yeah, okay, good, good. All right, Nine, okay. Um, I say that because, uh, you know, Darwin's, Darwin's legacy goes way beyond the images you guys see, you know. Um, he's been a part of our lives, everybody up here, a lot of people in the audience. Um, you know, this is, uh, we, we have a problem processing it because we think he's going to pop out any minute again and say, ah, I got you guys, you know, you know, um, it's very Darwin. Um, but we feel his presence and... Uh, yeah, so just, you know, these, these panels are a little tough for us, but uh, again, trying to celebrate his life, which is the best we can hope for. He's well, laughing his ass off that he's making us do these Oh, yeah, no, he's, he loves it. I'm comfortable up here. He would be so pissed off if he did this. <laughs> no, he, no, he would like no. it. He would be in the that back of the room. We have to do these panels? Okay, okay laugh all right, his all right, ass. All right, all right. The, <laughs> yes. Uncomfortable. Yes, awesome. exactly. Yeah. I got to do like five of these panels. It's like I'm getting paid to do these Darwin panels. For Christ's sake. But you're not. But you're not. not. You get nothing. You get, get nothing. nothing. Um, I, I want to introduce um, someone special on the panel. Um, Darwin's brother Dennis is sitting right next to me. And, uh, <laughs> uh, we had the idea to put a roll on him and sunglasses and just be like, ah, I fooled you. Guys. <laughs> But we didn't. Um, well, and, and you know, <laughs> this planet that well. There was no fedora in that. There's no fedora. <laughs> um, having having you here is great because it's going to be like you know we met you know we met your brother in the comic stage of his life in the comic stage of his career when he did comics. But uh, you were there from the beginning, and uh, the, I know you have some stories about him, uh, good and bad, probably, but mostly funny. Uh, knowing, is there anything that comes to mind that, you know, even us, we won't, we might not know about him that, you know, as a kid, little Darwin, what was little Darwin like? Well, you know, he was a nice guy. Don't, don't ask the ladies in there what he was like, but, uh, most people would know him as one of the worst drivers. Uh, <laughs> Growing up in the, the time that he was born, muscle cars were a, a big fat with teen boys. So Darwin had like a 65 uh, Chevelle SS. It's like a 440 cubic centimeter muscle car. And uh, he was working on it up on a ramp in the driveway one day. And this is typical Darwin. Engine's going, he's doing something, and it drops, scrapes up the side of the house, through the gate, into the backyard, into the maple tree. <laughs> and it was, I don't know what happened. But your dad was used to that stuff, wasn't he? He was. Uh, Delta 88, that's Delta 88. We drove past it one night as, wow, look at that accident. <laughs> Darwin borrowed that, Delta 88, to go on a date, and smeared it up. So now you tell us about his horrible driving, because he's driven me uh, places like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know. He couldn't have. The whole time I grew up with him, he never drove. After those accidents. Those accidents. Yes. Well, 
and uh, and your your dad, his he uh, so years back, uh, Darwin and Marsha moved down in, in the winters. They would spend it near Amanda and I down in Clearwater, and um, that was a big thing in his life was Florida. Um, you know why is that uh, for all of us? Um, Back in the day, the uh, Canadian dollar was worth a lot more than the American dollar. So what we used to do at Christmas, as a family that didn't have much money, was drive to Florida and have Christmas. You buy all your gifts there, you're still ahead of the game. So we did that for years on end, and it was us, the cousins, aunts, uncles, friends of the family, and we'd all rent out kitchenettes, you know, those little... And everybody would stay there, there was a pool, we'd always go to the beach. I mean, we'd come down and coming from Canada, if you went to the grocery store with your mom and seen Count Chocula right. and shit like that, you're like, holy fuck, mom. <laughs> <laughs> We're used to a bag of puffed weed underneath the kitchen sink and powdered milk and come in here, the chocolate ice cream bubble gum. And <laughs> so kids, they say about America, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Coming to the States, especially, particularly Florida, it did, there's iconic images when, from when you were a kid, the, the palm trees, the, the sand on the road near the beach, stuff like that. It was, you know, Long John Silvers. Yeah. I mean, I think I, there was one McDonald's up where we grew up. White Castle. <laughs> when I took him to White Castle, it was like, oh my God, White Castle. It was like, uh, I took him to Shangri-La. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, that, that type of stuff, you know, dog track. You know, sure. Dog track with the family. You see it in his art. Yeah. You know, because his art has this uh, open 50s kind of feeling to it. You know, it has this really, it's a modern retro, which is like the hardest thing, I think, to do in a way. It's, a, it, it does, it, it's retro, yet it looks completely fresh, you know, and um, not an easy thing. We see a lot of people try to do it, and it always comes off a little postcardy where uh, Darwin's always looked alive, like vibrant, you know, and... I think it took him a long time to get to that point where it was, it was acceptable for him to, to have that style. It, it, you see the progression of his art from the early days onwards. It, was, it became more apparent that he was in control of putting down what he really wanted to put down. But how, how old was he when he started drawing? When do you remember, like, him first starting when to he draw? he was drawing before I was born. How was he? No kidding. Well, as there was always the talk about Kenny got hockey equipment before he got right. art, art equipment. Okay. Yeah. Then I came along. And ruined everything. And ruined everything. <laughs> and you got nothing. No, I just didn't. <laughs> <that's laughs> all, all the shit that he had to do art with, I was using as well. Yeah. And, and uh, Brian, I want to ask you, what, do you remember when you first met Darwin? Yes. He apologized to me. <laughs> that was the first, the first uh, conversation he had. He was apologizing to me. He flaked on a story that uh, Axel had asked me to write for him. Right. Or, um, I think it was Flinch. It was one of those um, anthology titles. Or just when he was starting to get into uh, comics, leaving animation behind. Right. And uh, I met him in San Diego and said, hey man, it's like, you know, he introduced himself. I gotta say I'm sorry. That was the first time he apologized. <laughs> <laughs> Among many to many years. There was, yeah. yeah. yeah uh, I mean, that, you know, and, and again, the, the side of Darwin, a lot of people don't know, is the real sweet yeah. guy that spent a lot of time thinking about everything and would, would walk up to you and apologize. He would yeah, say, absolutely. you know what? I was Sorry, like, bye. Yeah. Yeah, 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 or whatever, yeah. But I mean, you know, again, you respect that a million times more than the guy who just uh, uh, runs away from you every time, or the guy that avoids you. You know, we all have people in our life like that, that they, they did something, so now they don't talk to you. And Darwin wasn't that guy. He would just go up to you and say, hey, I was you. wrong. Yeah, yeah, I was wrong. Or you were wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, he, he had no trouble with that for <laughs> <laughs> But that's, that's both sides of the same coin. Yeah. I mean, you, need, you have to have that as well. And uh, yeah, he had no trouble letting you know how he felt about you. And um, whether good or bad, happy, sad, the guy was never short of a hug no. or a, a compliment. Um, I know for me, because um, when I was you know, insecure about the writing and everything, and he, he would just be there and say, that's great, that's great, you should do that, oh, let me do the cover for that. And you know, so much encouragement yeah. I got from him. You know, uh, 
where a lot of the people I, that were close to me never read the books I did. And uh, Darwin read every single one of them, you know? And, uh, you know, the, it, just the idea that he read it was wild enough, but then he'd have some commentary and, and always constructive criticism. Um, if he didn't like something he told me, and which is refreshing, yeah. you know, because when you get to do things, a lot of people just tell you anything they think you want to hear and to move on. So uh, he wasn't that guy. If there was a problem, he, he would tell you and say, you know, you should work on this or you should do that. And again, the, the draftsman, the brilliant draftsman, the brilliant artist, and and, uh, and great guy. Frank, do you remember when you first met Dara? I met him with, through you. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, that's why he wants you to tell the story. That's why, yeah, he's always <laughs> waiting. No, 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 I don't remember. I don't remember, actually. No. <laughs> We okay, actually you talk about it the second time. All right, take me out of the boat. It was the next day. You have to go the second time. The um, we were supposed to go to dinner, me and you. Right. Uh, I think me, you, and Amanda, whatever. And you were telling me, uh, oh, uh, don't cook. This is the first. New, I think it was the first New York Comic Con, right? Yeah. Yeah. First New York Comic Con. Um, he goes, yeah, and uh, Don Cook is going to join us. Now. I, this was right after certain things happened with Marvel and right. Axel and whatnot, and drinks and faces and whatnot. So, um, this is all I know about Donald Cook. So I'm like, oh, uh, you know. Did you wear, did you wear a hat? <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought, well, you know what I figured? I was like, am I going to get along with this guy? I'm going to be rolling around with this guy before the salad's come out, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. But you know what? It was, uh, it was the act actual opposite. We and him hit it off tremendously, and you know, uh, he was really one of the great friendships of my life. Uh, I do miss the guy. He called you an asshole. Like a million times. Like, yeah. He's laughing. I'm telling you, he's laughing at us right now. Yeah, yeah. Well, Frank, by the way, just uh, on his deathbed, he did say, it. "At least I'm not Frank." <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad at least he felt that. You're next. Yeah, I am next. You know I'm next. You're gonna cry when I'm done. Yeah. I'm gonna. This gonna be. I'm glad he's the best. It's dead panel. Let's go and pass the panel. There's gonna be five Frank Terry dead panels. Is he like one good? He's dead. Yeah. When you die, we're gonna have a great panel. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. Well, Mike, you're we're, next we're actually week. planning it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 On, I can do it now. By the way, get your autograph tomorrow from Frank. Yeah. <laughs> Sunday, kids, Sunday there's no autographs yeah. going to be for Frank. It's going to be eBay Bonanza. <laughs> yeah, but I ain't going to be doing any of these where every little nice things are going to be saying about me. DC ain't going to be putting out any Frank Terry books. <laughs> not doing that right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, can I punch you again? Now, now. <laughs> well, he, he, you know, look, Frank and, Frank, when Frank and Darwin were in the same room, it was, it was, you just had to watch it. Oh, it just man. unraveled and, you know, it was like nothing else. They would just keep insulting each other. Eventually yes. the mothers would be brought into it. <laughs> And then, you know, then the fathers, and then some kind of sexual disease, and, and it would just go from there. But again, you know, it's, it's a, it's a uh, you guys who have close friends, when you have really close friends, you can say anything to them. You can terrorize them. Now, people around us, anybody who sees Frank on the internet, on Facebook, understands this, between him and Dave Johnson and Cully, if you read these posts, it's, just, it's a horror show. Okay, but it's again, it's the, the friendship. You can get away with it when you have close friends like that. What? What are you doing? You got, really? Is it come on a panel? Tell us about when you met Darwin. Did he change your diaper? Uh, yeah. 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 It's all in resurrected. Could be. Yeah. And Darwin loved kids. He did. He loved the kid. No, this is true. He, he like he would sit down and spend hours. Yeah, what? There you go. That kid, I don't know so much. About. I'm it's okay. He can run around. What's the difference? Let him run around. It's true. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 
As long as he doesn't shit in his pants. <laughs> Nobody wants to smell it. Randy's grandson. Come it's on. Randy's grand. Oh, well. Randy shit in his pants. Yeah, Randy is, yeah, takes care of the grandpa. <laughs> nice job, grandpa. Thanks. All right. The jeans. Oh, get, go down the line, Mike. You and get, get somebody give a mic to Mike. All right. Um, <laughs> Mike, we, we, you know, when we were in uh, San Diego, we talked about time Darwin spent with you guys. A different side of Darwin. You want to talk about that a little bit? Well, the kids thing is right. I mean, we're our house is packed with kids, and uh, I, I love the way they're not he, his, but they're just <laughs> like kids. <laughs> and and the way he treated Laura was always so sweet, and, and uh, uh, his interaction with women was very impressive. Always classy, old school. Um, but I met him because, uh, well, my first exposure to his work was on Comic Shop, Shop News. It was a promo for Catwoman, and it blew me away. And then right after that, we were at Comic-Con, and Ed Brubaker, who we've known forever, um, said that uh, they needed an inker on the book, asked Darwin um, who they would like to get for the inking, and Darwin said, um, someone like Mike Allred. So I said, well, I'm like Mike Allred. <laughs> and he was there. Ed took us over to the bar that he was at. And we hit it off. Uh, we liked all the same movies and music and had the same influences growing up. And just, uh, it's one of the fastest friendships I've ever had in my life, to the point where he told us that he was coming to stay with us. <laughs> Uh, which he did, and you talked about his... Cue the cake for your music. <laughs> <laughs> you talked about the cars. For whatever reason, when, when he came to stay with us, he rented this big boat of a Cadillac. Um, rather than, you know, like he had to dig deep to find that thing. And it was incredible. And uh, we had a little cabin that was on a lake connected to the ocean. And so we would go out there. And when we first got it, it was barely furnished, but there was this big coffee table in the middle of the uh, main room. And we would spend hours just drawing and passing the paper back and forth. So I would finish his drawings, and he would finish mine. And since the last panel, I realized this was uh, my career had kind of, you know, I, I was doing well, but there was something about Darwin that just kick-started me. And we just got, it, it, it reignited this love of comics and art and creating. And um, it was just perfect timing. We were starting X Force at the time, which became X Statics. And again, Darwin said that he was going to be my fill in artist, so he became a fill in artist. He always told us what was going to happen. And, um, but his instincts were always correct, and it, it was always exciting to know that he cared that much. Like you were talking about how he would read your stuff and would be passionate about something, which would then make you passionate about it. Right, right. Contagious. Because Very a pat contagious. on the back from him always meant more because he wasn't full of shit. It you know did. I mean? And it's somebody that you couldn't help but respect. Yeah. He, and, uh, and if he was, if, if he was on his, uh, so he had good behavior and bad behavior. <laughs> and even when he was on his worst behavior, it was somehow charming. <laughs> I don't know how he did that, but you you couldn't help but love the guy. And we were taught to smile after we were bad. <laughs> Lift your eyebrows and smile. You become charming quickly. <laughs> but so we, and then of course, so soon after that, we would make sure that we would be invited to the same conventions, which was always great. And you'd call me up and say, "I got you invited to Montreal," and um, so we we would have a great time knowing that we would be at the same shows. Which encouraged Laura and I to go to shows because um, uh, with just our family situation, we're always having to, any spare time we have, we want to do with the family. And Darwin made going to shows so much fun, we just had to always make sure we did it. And uh, then we, for the longest time, we heard about this fictional woman, Marsha. Like, he had a girlfriend named Marsha. Like, yeah, sure he did. Um, and then finally we got to meet her. And, and in Montreal, and that, that is probably our favorite con convention that we've ever been to. It was really small, poorly attended, and it meant that we had nothing but time to, to the four of us to spend together. 
and why should we try to drag us into sex shops and sex clubs? <laughs> really? Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> Seriously? Listen, I made him say fuck five times. I would forgive him. <laughs> yeah, she's she's a corrupter. Um, what? And not to take time away from the panel, but I, I do have to say that one of my absolute favorite memories was uh, at their wedding. Uh, I got to sing Rebel Rebel and watched Marsha dancing on a table and Darwin <laughs> going around the table trying to make sure that she, just she fell and he that. caught her. That, I was looking for singles the whole time. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so on Marsha's face is pure bliss and on Darwin's face is sheer terror. Yeah. I just love that. That's great. That's great. And Billy, you and Darwin always had a lot to talk about. Yeah. Um, politics. Yeah, well, uh, so about the first time you met him, I think I was there. That dinner, I think I met him. It was after Catwoman. I knew he was. And let's go to dinner. And uh, he started. You want that dinner? I, I, I think. So. Shows you how much I think. You know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I always said I'd rather be rich than famous. So, so someday I'll be rich, hopefully. All right, go on. Let's not read. Anyway, so anyway, so uh, no, yeah, we—it's it, it, just my whole family with him too. But the first time we met, it was at a dinner, I think, at one of the New York Comic Cons, one of the first ones, and we got it. Well, he's a very passionate person, and as Mike was saying, he made you passionate too. He, what, as Frank said, it was contagious how passionate he was, and but how great he was because he was the most confident. Creator I've ever met. By far. I mean, yeah. he what he did a line, and I remember one time, even my, it was at a New York show, and he had a big line and had to finish a sketch for a friend. He was always doing sketches for his friends. He was always doing things like that. So he came and sat with me because nobody was by me. So, uh, but I was doing my a commission too, and he was doing his, and he's like, and he got mad at me because I'm like, he's like, just finish it, just do that. That line's great. I'm like, you, this, you think this line's great? He's like, that's great, do it. And I, and I finished it. So again, his confidence made you confident. But the first time we met, we had two we had two disagreements. I think our whole lives together. And uh, one was the very first time I saw him. And then we kind of got into a spat. And then until we realized we both were saying we both were agreeing with each other. But we were so wanted to get our points across. And then the next day we were hugging it out and everything. And uh, then the second time was uh, just a little disagreement about the the cat woman. That he didn't that and uh, that uh, she, Selena wouldn't wear four-inch heels, and he wanted to be like um, uh, Orgy Hepburn, like Breakfast at Tiffany's, and I, and because we both love film and stuff like that too, and I was, of course Orgy Hepburn would wear Cat would, Selena would wear four-inch heels, or or Orgy Hepburn was she never wore four-inch heels in that movie. And the whole point of that we deduced that because George Papard was she was five seven and George Papard, which he told me, was five ten. Or something. They didn't want her to be as tall as him, so she wore the shorter heels. So, uh, and that's what you were fighting. That's what you had to fight. Really? That's how it was. You don't like the one. I went to technology, so then there was some derogatory things thrown my way. So, what did you wind up wearing then? But getting back to to to. The beauty of him is that, Mike, when you said on the panel in San Diego, what Laura said was when she won her Eisner, and how he was more happy for her finally winning hers than him getting his own. And he le leapt up and ran to her and hugged her before she got to the stage. And you just see how, how, how his friends, or even people if they weren't his friends, if he respected your work, he really admired you. And to get someone like him, who admire you and what you did was just it put you over the moon. Right. It really did, and he was very supportive. Yeah, he was. It and didn't hurt that he had like a hundred eyes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, got, he had like a separate house with eyes. <laughs> <in it. laughs> he used to offer them out to people. You want an eyes? I'm like, no, I, I, I'm kind of hungry though. You know? But it, you know that leads to Ben. Yeah. Yeah. No. So Ben, Ben, if you guys don't know, Ben is a good friend of ours, and he's a great. I mean, him and Darwin, uh, you know, inseparable. Um, he was very, sp uh, very special to Darwin. Um, if there was any kind of issue or something, he would call Ben right away to talk it over. He was, uh, you know, he was the guy. You were, you were the, the go-to guy for a lot of things for Darwin. Oh 
was the out of the industry, uh, normal mainstream. <laughs> normal. <laughs> Not on the spectrum front. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a very spectrum uh, stage up here, that's for sure. Um, but how did you guys, you, I mean, you first, you know, you, you were first a fan of the yeah, work, correct? Yeah, I first met him at a show and, uh, you know, just went up actually with uh, Randy and uh, Jim Clancy. Walked up and uh, just started, you know, talking with him about the art. And it was one of those, hey, what are you guys doing? Want to go get some lunch? Yeah, sure. You know, and a couple of martinis later, you know, it's a uh, fast friendship. And uh, it was really, you know, you talk about the loyalty, uh, the endorsements, you know, that he would give people. He was amazingly loyal, amazingly warm person. And a lot of times that rough exterior, people don't see that. Uh, there's always the the news story, Did darling. Did you like that? I'm just checking. It, it sounded like it. No, no. You check Somebody cut me out. Randy? Yeah? yeah. AAV like, guys. Randy, you don't like what he's saying? Randy's 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 Randy may be dead. Okay. Um, <laughs> he's got too much mic time. He's got too much mic time. <laughs> but yeah, there, there was often the, the Darwin tabloid story. You know, right. Of, Darwin Cook did this, Darwin Cook did that. And uh, what people didn't see are the non sensational things. Yeah. Um, and that was the friendship, that was the support. Uh, you can go talk to anybody out in Artist Alley, you know, guys that have been coming up in the last few years. Uh, one of the happiest guys to do a cover for any book coming out would be Darwin Cook. Hey, hey kid, that's great. I'll do a cover for you. And you just plot, really. <laughs> and uh, without hesitation, without asking for anything back in return, other than, you know, just respect and common courtesy. And, uh, yeah, he was an amazing guy. And uh, what he did day to day as a friend uh, is greater to me than you know, the magnificent art they did up here. Yeah, sure. And uh, yeah, I, it sucks. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, that, that, that is the theme. It, it does suck. I mean, but, uh, he's a guy who should have been here uh, for a long time. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, we, we got cheated out of a lot of great stories. Uh, Darwin had on his computer, you know, he, he used to tell, hey, I'm going to do this, and I got this story coming, and that story coming, and... Always something cooking. He was never idle. He was Darwin no. cooking. That could be a good <laughs> <argument. Darwin cooking. laughs> Yeah, he was never idle. He always had something, you know, brainstorming back, and always working. You know, there was never that, well, what happened to Darwin Cook? You know, I, there was never the two years of nothing going on at Darwin Cook. Was Although he was great at his, uh, he would do that, go outside in the morning, stretch, and go, look at this place. You know, it's, it would be in the moment. And that's what I liked about Darwin. He was in the moment all the time. Whatever was going on, he was there. He lived full. He, right. He wasn't thinking about tomorrow. It was that he was right there at the time. And it's really important uh, because you felt he'd pull you right in. You felt there, right there with you. And, uh, you know, again, even if you disagreed with him, and, you know, there would be a, a great conversation afterwards. And he wouldn't poo-poo it. He'd, he'd, no. he'd talk it all out. And he'd be the first guy to go, you know what, that's a good point. No, if you stood up to him, he'd respect that. Yeah. He respected yeah. that. He, he respected wanted that. that. Yeah. Well, well exactly. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Exactly. Oh, if you were talking shit, he'd call you out on it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It would be an unbearable experience for you. Yes, it would be unbearable. <laughs> he would never let you forget it either. Which I, which I, you know, again, I, like I said, I, the best friend, you know, it just, uh, there's always unspoken language when you have close friends. You know, there's that language that you can never really, even doing these panels, we're never gonna get across Darwin to the, the way we want to. You know, we just come up here and make a nice attempt to kind of bring you guys in a little closer because again, it's, you know, oh, here's, oh look at that, that's beautiful. Look at that bat, he's getting, I took that picture of him and Batman making out uh, up there. And, uh, yeah. There's Amanda looking at Darwin, like, what the hell did Darwin say in that press thing? That Amanda's like, oh, um, oh you, oh you. Is it oh no, Amanda? Is it like more like oh no? I think so, yeah. Yeah, so like, he did, did he just say that? Did he just insult all those people? Uh, yeah, it's like, don't say it. Don't yeah, don't say it. Yeah, these are, these are great. I like, I like the... I like this one. He's a little dreamy, Darwin. Oh, here's an, oh, there's the wedding. That's great. Yeah. Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. There's uh, <laughs> We have a. We have a. Does, does somebody from the audience want to tell the Pooh story? Uh, uh, no. I'm still traumatized. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure, Dan? You don't want to come just, up? You can tell the story. It's your house. 
Well, okay, this is a funny, this is a cute story. <laughs> it's cute. Uh, so Darwin, it's not cute. Uh, Darwin and Marsha were, <laughs> it's not cute. Darwin and Marsha were, um, where'd you guys go, like, uh, uh, like a secondhand store or something? And they found a, a, a Winnie the Pooh, an adult size, <laughs> a Winnie the Pooh suit. And um, so Dan came over, Dan came down to Florida and he crashed at our house uh, one night, but he was really tired from traveling, and he, so Dan, Dan DiDio took a nap on my couch, and little did he know, what's that? Best nap couch ever. It's a very good nap couch, and um, so Darwin, you know, found out about this and got in his Winnie the Pooh suit, <laughs> and while, Darwin, while, while Dan was sleeping, he crawled on top of Dan. <laughs> And when he said the words, but shh, it's okay. Like, right? Is that what he said? Like, and Dan, Dan freaked out. Dan was like, what the hell are you? And again, granted, a, a grown man in the penny, the Winnie the Pooh suit is frightening. Um, but we probably left for a month. Dan, therapy's done, right? You're going to be cool with it, right? It's back. It's back. It's back now. And he, the imagery brought it back. Um, and that was that was the. Uh, there's another part of Darwin, a mischievous yeah. troublemaker that what he did the same thing to Phil Noto. Yeah. Phil Noto. He put his hand over Phil's mouth. Yeah, but he put his hand over Phil's mouth. Like, oh, okay. You got a lot of, and that suit was only seven bucks, right? So yeah, I got a lot of, lot of uh, play out of that. I did some great photos of at Marsha and Dar at their wedding in Vegas. This is in the, in the, was this in the, when the, where's that photo from? I, I'm trying to think, it's, is this nightclub act when he was in Vegas? <laughs> hey baby, uh, you know, yeah, it looks like he was doing Oh, it's a bachelor party, okay. <laughs> yes, and, and there's a gang up there, all troublemakers, and that's when he worked at the Carney. Uh, <laughs> so, did, did, do, you, did, do you remember any of his jobs, like when he was a kid? Do you remember? Okay, uh, like, <laughs> uh, well, he did, he worked, everybody worked, but uh, he worked for a moving company, car rental place as a car jockey. Uh, he, he did what, he did what uh, all of us in our family did, which was once you finish high school or drop out of high school, the next day show up at this address, you're glazing, working construction. Uh, so he did that for two or three months before he enrolled in community college. What is that community college? What does that mean? Uh, that means you pay a lot less. Oh, okay. It's not really that important. It just keeps right. you out of the workforce for a while. But I mean, a natural, <laughs> yeah, but, but a natural talent, I mean, you know, that's going to emerge anyway, no matter what yeah. job you start. He was taking graphic design, and I think anybody in the room that has any talent and is leaning that way is you find, uh, if you go to school for art, uh, if you really have talent, you usually don't end school. You usually leave because they're trying to push a particular agenda on you. And if you have any talent in your own fourth vision, uh, you end up leaving and just getting off with it by yourself. Yeah, I mean, it, and his talent, you know, it was it was went beyond just the superhero stuff. I mean, the design logos he did and, and designed uh, well, we books. Worked, we worked together doing uh, graphic design, like corporate stuff for probably five years or so. Oh, okay. Um, before, and that was when he was, first tried to break into comics at a young age. Right. Uh, but the money wasn't there. Right. Um, and we were doing designs. It's not like it is now, right? We're millionaires. <laughs> <laughs> we're just rolling. Uh, comparatively, I think it was like 25 bucks. Whenever you were submitting, you'd get 25 bucks. Right. right. That, that wasn't enough. To American or Canadian? <laughs> it might have been there. <laughs> like fourteen dollars. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that was around the time he started uh, pushing Batman Ego. Oh, okay. To yeah. DC. Right. And right. And it wasn't long after. I think Chiarello called. Right. Mark Chiarello ended called. up going to California. And That's right. Working with Bruce Tim. And, and, and he learned a lot from, from Bruce Tim. Yeah. Yeah. Batman Beyond. Right. Yeah. Intro the credits and. I mean, you know, Darwin could do everything. That was the scary part. He'd color his own work, he'd throw the lettering on it. He, you know, he was a one-man machine with this stuff, uh, which a lot of people can't do. 
it, it, it's just not a common thing. It really isn't. In comics, the person that does everything usually wins, you know? And, uh, I mean, the, the amount of work, the, the awards he won, I mean, it's just, look, you know, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Like I said, we all got cheated because uh, it would have been great to have another 40 years of him around in his work. The public got cheated, we got cheated in different ways. That's a quote right there. That's Darwin. Okay. Oh, it's Donald Westlake, who is the author of the uh, Parker novels. And Darwin was in love with these books. And if you haven't seen the adaptations he's done, go find them. They're brilliant. And he's put pretty much all of us in the books at some point. Because when he thinks of criminals, he thinks of his friends. <laughs> and, uh, but we, it's the ultimate flattery is that Darwin would draw you in a book. And it would be a flattering version of you, except for Frank. It was with, with the goatee all the time. He says, I look yeah. too nice without the goatee. So it is, you know, because you're a scumbag, so you always put too nice <laughs> with the goatee. I'm like, all right, whatever, you know? And then I, you know. I and can't count the number later. of times he killed me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. His spirit, right? Yeah, spirit. you can kill yeah. his spirit. His spirit, yeah, I remember. It's like, it's killing Brian as well. That's all. Brian's a nice guy. There's still time, Brian. There's still yeah. time. Yeah, you can, you can throw it back at him now. He can't do anything. He won't call you up a little Oh, you're right. I should kill him. <laughs> <laughs> Would that be the ultimate tribute? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, think in, I think in Hellblazer 1, they put me and Darwin in the bar. In, in Hellblazer 1, which is sweet. That was more attack. What's the, yeah. the cover with... Me, 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 Darwin, and you get It's shot. a Jonah Hex yeah. <laughs> cover. Um, Dave Johnson drew it. Yeah, yeah. And it had dead bodies, and it was me, you, and Darwin. <laughs> dead bodies. So we don't know. Maybe we're next. You know? we're, we're probably next. Yeah. Yeah, definitely you're next. I'm definitely next. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like five years, folks. Five years. Let's get those books signed tomorrow. <laughs> right? I'm telling you. I want you to do my uh, eulogy. In the year panel. Yeah. My panel. Yes. <laughs> Just one. Right? Sounds like God's having a problem with you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's having, I'm having a war. Darwin would love to see Frank sweat right now. That would be a good thing. But, uh, you know, so, um, he's, he's, uh, he's, you know, left an impact in his life, you know, and it's the best thing you can hope for in a life that you, uh, you make a difference in somebody's life, you know, and, and people's lives. You like to think, we like to, we all like to think we're doing something to, you know, we, we entertain, we make comics, we're living in depression. Um, and, and Darwin's just you know, like a five-star life, you know? The guy was just the nicest, sweetest guy. We, would, we wouldn't have these tributes, and we're gonna have some more across the country. Um, and, and uh, yeah, it's, it's hard because I, I wanna say so much about him because uh, you guys only know the work. Yeah. Um, have a lot of people met him at the cons? Anybody here like met him over the years? Did he, did he, did he draw something for you? Did he yell at you? Did he tell you to stop being a baby man? And uh, grow a pair of balls and stop crying? He said every one of those things to me. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He'd have no problem telling you what was Never You knew where you stood. He would also separate church and state. There was some business thing, he said, I can't stand you right now, but when I see you, I'll give you a hug. Because yeah. he understood it was like two different things, and that's a, a very mature perspective. And again, there's no guessing. Uh, was he always like that, you know, when he was like, like tell it like it is, or, you know? Well, one of the big things, one of the, uh, he did like a, and I can't remember which book it was he did, but there was like three or four pages at the end of it was about a kid with his dad driving around in an old car and they go to a friend's house and there's a woman painting and the kid's talking to the woman painting. What's well, the true story? It was a friend of my dad's, his wife was a painter. She inspired Darwin uh, to just do what he wanted with art. And I think he took that because he was as everybody said it, like he was always inspirational, always trying to be, help people feel confident, feel good about what they were doing. He was great with kids yeah. to yeah. sit down and sketch something and start telling them how to do it. I think it's, he took that experience out of young life and realized how important it was to him, so therefore it's gotta be important to everybody else. And you'd be a complete dick if you turned your back on people without giving them some type of constructive criticism. Uh, he was very opinionated about a lot of stuff and a lot of people misunderstood his point of view on certain things, but that's because they took it at face value and not really looked at the deeper meaning. Yeah. If 
they didn't know him the way his friends do and a lot of other people do, but they would understand all he ever wanted was for everything to be better for everybody. Yeah, no, passion. You know, people misinterpret passion yes. all the time. You know, and, uh, and it's a, a life not worth living without it. And he definitely had it. No, oh, well, I think we were all brought up the same. We all have a long list of uh, enemies we grew up with through school and work and whatever, and it's mainly because, as we all said, we're just misunderstood. <laughs> yeah, I, I think so. I think so. This is Frank, right, Frank? I am very misunderstood. <laughs> Frank's the sweetest guy. I am. I'm sweet. He is. Really? No, really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not dead yet. I'm not dead. You're not sweet. <laughs> right. I'll, I'll when you're dead, I'll say you're sweet. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> and Ben, I mean, you more than anybody, like I said, we we all had this uh, talking about comics in common with Darwin, right? We talk about books and everything, but you didn't so much. You had you came from the you know different background and sure. I mean, we talk about comics. We talk about writing. Uh, my writing that I do. And, my work is completely different, you know. Can you tell everybody what you do? Uh, I'm a grant writer, so I have to. I still don't know what that means. Yeah, well, it's it's cool. Frank, Frank, look it up in the dictionary. You don't know what it is either. Oh, I know what it is. So, you know, we'd still talk back and forth, uh, you know, different industry things of our own, you know, line of work. But yeah, I mean, uh, some of the best memories are just sitting there bullshitting over movies. You know, and just uh, one of the last things I did with them was watch Jaws. And, uh, Mark and I sat there and watched, uh, watched Jaws with him on the couch, and Jaws was over, and Jaws 2 was rolling up. And he's like, let's give it a minute. Let's see if it's really as bad as I remember it being. <laughs> yeah. And five minutes into Jaws 2, he's yeah, this is shit. <laughs> Move on. But yeah, At least um, it wasn't Jaws 3. Right. <laughs> oh, four. But, but he loved, loved to talk about film. Yeah, um, he talked in the film too. When we go to the movies, sure. he would just turn me. This is shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, all right, well, we're still watching it. Are you this is terrible. <laughs> he, he goes, "Why didn't you drag me to Elliot's Predator?" And I remember him like, "I remember," and I'm like, "I didn't make the movie, dude. I didn't make it. You know, it's not my fault." He's like, "I can't believe two hours of my life gone. Aliens beating up Predators. Oh my god!" I'm like, "I didn't make it." You know, yeah, everything with him was just full. Whether you know, he's in the middle of a steak. A cocktail, uh, but whatever it was, he was he was in that. Um, and people talk about you know, you keep saying kids. Uh, you know, I've got three kids. They kind of grew up, you know, with the cons and visiting the house and things like that. And watching him with those kids, amazing. Um, it's a great picture. I don't know if you took it or Jenny took it with him outside of your house. And uh, would the kids make a bird? Yeah, it's, that's a house. Uh, and he's Canada. got the drill yeah. or something. Yeah. Or and they're sitting there. To, you see, it's a back shot of them. And uh, it just warms yeah. your heart. He's just in this deep conversation with him. And, but it was know, the, the time with you, him and your kids. Yeah, my, yeah. Yeah. my kids. Yeah, yeah. yeah, my kids love them. My, well, Matthew, was, he's just like you and him. They, they, Miserable, mean. <laughs> yeah. and they, just, they, just, they just got along like peace and care. And Jerry is Matthew's arch enemy. Yeah. He's gonna. Uh, it's nice to meet you, murderer. Yeah. Like, you know, Five years. Yeah. Yeah. So Matthew, uh, we were just, you will be my. Yeah. He's the one who's gonna kill you. Yeah. 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 Pretty much. Here's so. the thing I was thinking the other day. What I miss about him. How much he enjoyed eating. Yes. Okay. How much he would sit there and like do that Ralph Cramden thing. Like steak would be in front of him, and he'd be like, "Look at it." And uh, and it was funny because uh, one of the comic stores we'd go to once in a while, there was a Popeyes chicken down the road, and we'd go and he'd go. We're going to Popeyes, right? I'm like, oh yeah, we're going to Popeyes. And he would just—he wouldn't buy like a, a, a piece of chicken. He'd buy. He go, I'll have twelve pieces. Yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. He'd buy a box of it because he'd be like, I, you know, this for later. Like he, he always bought like a yeah, like, like twelve pieces. Oh well, yeah, he'd eat it the next whatever. But he loved his steaks too. Tell the steak and lobster So there was one time it was. It was me, Dan Dio, Bob Wayne, James Robinson, yep. and Darwin. And 
for some reason, uh, Darwin felt that DC did him wrong that week, which was like every other week. Or okay, but he felt like he, he, like DC did him wrong that week. And so we sat down at a really nice dinner. Dan invited us to a really nice dinner. And Dan just, and, and Darwin just looks at Bob Wayne and Dan and goes, uh, so, is DC paying for this dinner? And Dan's like, yeah, of course. Well, we're, of course, we're gonna pick it up. And he goes, okay, good to know. What is a martini? And a waiter comes over and he tells the waiter, he goes, okay, I want the biggest steak you sell. I want the big, I want it medium, medium rare, biggest steak you have. And I want the biggest lobster you have in that tank <laughs> over there. And we're laughing, we're giggling, because he's never going to finish all this food. We understand he's getting the... Nope, he sat there, ate that steak, finished the steak. It was nothing but bone. And then he said, bring the lobster. And the lobster was the size of that kid that was running around. Like, it, was, it was pretty big. And, uh, and he sat there and he ripped that thing open like Predator vs. Aliens. Uh, he, he ripped that thing open. He sat there and looking at you too. Like, like see, I'm, you're going to pay for this. Like it was wonderful. It was a wonderful night of carnage. Um, and, 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 uh, but that was it too. Like, he loved his steak and he loved his food and he enjoyed the weird. things in life. Simple he enjoyed things. White Simple Castles. Things. When I introduced him to White Castles, me, him, and Randy were drunk after a DC party in New York. And uh, we're walking back to the hotel and he's like, well, let's get something to eat. And I'm like, you know, there's all whatever. I'm like, you know, there's a White Cat. He's like, White Castle? Like to him, it was like well, because we would talk about it. Exactly. And he, didn't, he didn't, you know, Canada doesn't have White exactly. Castle. Yeah, you, know. you guys ain't got White Castle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you also don't have the horns. You don't have. Uh, yeah, you don't have uh, yeah. so anyway. Oh, last try. He was like, no, White Castle. He's like, oh, let's, let's call it White Castle. And like, like Jimmy says, he goes in there and he doesn't order like, look, White Castle. You go, you order, you know, three for him. He went there. He only ordered a family meal. <laughs> for himself. And damn it, if he didn't sit down there and eat that whole freaking family meal I, by himself. He loved it. And he loved it. He's sitting I, there. You got yeah. the picture? I got a text at uh, you know, I got a text at four thirty in the morning yeah. on my phone going, just had White Castles, amazing. In my room, I'm like, what is that? <laughs> He's sitting there eating. Who texted eating. that for him? He's yeah, sitting, sitting there eating this. Yeah, exactly. It was right, did it? Technological. Yeah. Oh, He's yeah. sitting there like, oh, these are the rifles. Oh, onions. Oh. It was like, you know. And we drove, and we drove Darwin crazy because we talk about. New York pizza all the time. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, and he would, yeah, he would go, yeah. you with the New Yorkers, no, the Brooklyn, Brooklyn Nights with the yeah, pizza. Brooklyn. Everything's the best in Brooklyn. But then, yeah. we, then we took him out to some pizza and he was like, this is fantastic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he loved to eat, he, he loved his food, and uh, you know, and the other thing we used to go, all of us used to get together for breakfast in Safety Harbor and right, with everybody, and it was just such a nice thing to do. It was a, it was a great thing that uh, is always on our minds. Um, Jimmy? Jim? Yeah. Can we get this mic on? Mike, Mike, Mike. Mike C. Jack. Who are you? Mike C. Jack. Jack. Floor Mike. Ryan? Ryan? Yeah, yeah. thank you. Oh, good lord. Okay, Randy. Uh, I'd like to ask a question. Introduce please. yourself. I'd like to ask a question if I could. Sure. Yeah, no, uh, my name's Randy House. Uh, I work with uh, one of the organizers of Boston Comic Con. Boo! <laughs> Not the Comic Con. Not I, the Comic Con. You! I, uh, I work for free. Um, so, uh, so no one paid me to say anything. Uh, I want to thank these guys for taking the time to come up here and deliver this tribute to Darwin. There were some funny stories. There were some great stories. I won't share the White Castle picture because if you saw me in it, you'd be like, he should be in jail. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was, I was a little, just a little. A little I was the only reason he was got to stay that time. Oh. I had jalapeno. I had jalapeno. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't feel bad for your butt. That's yeah, all I got to say. Which Darwin was like, are they just brutal? Some kind of idiot? <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you? Can I have some of your regular ones? <laughs> and you know what? He shared them with me, okay? So he didn't eat all of his burgers. But uh, no, I want to thank you guys. I want to thank you guys because, one, uh, we did the, the tribute panel in San Diego, right? Yes. Eight o'clock, right? Yes. It, we started this at 7. Do you really think Darwin would have been here at a 7 o'clock yeah. or 8 o'clock no. panel? At a 7 o'clock panel? Come on. Friday night. No. Really? Especially if it was about him. Exactly. Well, no, he would have been here if it was about him. So, so he would have been sitting in the back going, assholes. 
<laughs> like he would have done that, and he would have been like, oh, that's sweet. So yeah. whenever you guys are ready to wrap it up. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Um, so, okay. So, yes, I guess the end of the panel. All right. It's, it always that's, goes quickly. That's a nice way of saying get out. Yeah, yeah thanks, Randy. <laughs> nice, nice, nice to make an appearance and tell you to get out. 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 Uh, so, for, you uh, know. The, the drink and draw starts at 9 p.m. Oh, there you go. All right. Where is that? Nobody okay. cares. Randy, where is that? It's across the street. So the yeah. drink and draw is right across the street at the Tamo Lounge. I should talk about it. If you want to be there, there at Albany Square. All right. So, and listen, every, thank you, everybody, for coming, everybody up here in the audience as well. I hope you guys get to at least get another look at, at look at the art. It means a little something more to you guys when you see it. I hope, you know, at least a little insight into the man. Uh, he will not be forgotten in our lifetimes, especially not by us. Um, you know, again, a great guy, uh, heartbreaking panel to do, but also uh, fantastic to celebrate him. So thank you everybody for coming tonight. The best thing you can do for your dad is legacy. If you're a fan, go out and buy his books. Yeah, buy give them to someone. Yeah, and uh, introduce them to Darwin Cook. You know, but we were joking that this that this is the second Darwin Cook Memorial panel, and that we're all. I mean, I these these panels can go on for hours, um, and there's a couple more set up. But with us, and hopefully you guys too, should do it, and maybe on a different level if you didn't know him personally. But we'll be holding these panels the rest of our lives when we all yes. get together. I mean, just there's so many memories, and again, yeah. his work and Kirby still is famous. just, it's immortal. And, and Marsha, we love you, sweetheart. We're there for yes. you all the time. <laughs> all right, let's go out and have, some, have a drink on Dar and celebrate. What? I, I know what the artists... One more thing, one more thing too. Are there any art collectors? Uh, our art auction is tomorrow from five to seven. We will be donating uh, to the Canadian Cancer Society. And don't forget to use Geico for insurance. <laughs> <laughs>